All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're starting up our briefing on the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. Uh, this is a ballot measure that is already qualified for the November 2024 ballot. A coalition of good government and taxpayer advocate groups worked together in the 2022 cycle to collect 1.4 million signatures to put this measure on the ballot. And I can tell you right now that California politicians consider this the biggest threat to them, them and their ability to raise our taxes. This is the most powerful taxpayer reform initiative since 1978's Prop 13. And in a moment, I think you'll understand why uh, as I cover some of the powerful uh, provisions of this initiative. You can get more information and track the, the progress of the campaign at our website, stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. That's stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. To ask questions during the town hall, which we will take at the end of my uh, prepared remarks at the beginning, um, we will have uh, people uh, selected from Zoom as well as the chat box and on the phone. Uh, so if you're in the Zoom app, all you have to do is click raise your hand, raise hand, and we'll call on you when we get to the Q&A session. If you're on a phone, hit star nine and you'll be put in the queue. When you hear the uh, tone, then uh, please... Um, uh, ask your question. You also can type in questions into the Q&A and chat box on the Zoom uh, software. So I, I will be reading those questions uh, online and I can respond to them um, uh, at the end of the presentation. And finally, if you uh, have a question that comes up afterwards or a question that's not asked uh, and answered, please email us at info at reformcalifornia.org. So let's get started with the uh, uh, briefing. California tax rates are already the highest in the country. Um, and we have literally crushed working families and small businesses in this state. Uh, just this past week, the California Business Roundtable put out a study where uh, it showed that we are seeing a net migration from California. We've known people are fleeing California, but what the Business Roundtable uh, study shows is that we are losing high income taxpayers to other states. And the only people who are showing up in California are lower income taxpayers. And that's why California has become the um, basically the capital of poverty. We have a third of the poverty recipients of this uh, country, but only 12% of the population. And we're seeing billions of dollars of tax earnings go to other states, and we're not replacing that with um, taxpayers in our state. And that's why Democrats, to continue to finance their out of control spending, they're raising tax rates across the board in so many ways. We have the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, we have the high property taxes, and, and people say, well, didn't Prop 13 cap and limit property taxes? Yes, it did, but remember, our home values are much more, um, are much higher than the national average. And so Californians are paying more than their fair share for property taxes. We have the highest gas tax, the highest car tax. And then there are all sorts of stealth taxes that are applied a lot of these are for your utility bills. Um, we found $4.5 billion in hidden state taxes on your electric and gas bills. And uh, Democrats continue to say, oh, we're, we're investigating why your rates are so high. Uh, we know why the rates are so high. It's the mandates and, of course, these hidden taxes. On top of that, these legislators want to increase your taxes even more. So here are the seven types of taxes that we are tracking right now that we believe will be increased. Next slide. First and foremost is the mileage tax. And this is something that um, is being piloted right now in San Diego County. We're opposing that pilot project. Um, and it was supposed to be implemented January 1st of 2023, but we've really been that effective in uh, slamming local politicians who are pushing this and, and delaying it. Um, but the mileage tax is something that the politicians at the state level and the local level have been pushing for a while. 
And we know that this is part of Caltrans projection. Um, mileage tax as we get electric vehicles would be implemented, but it does not replace the gas tax. So on top of the gas tax and the car tax, you then would have to pay a mileage tax. There's also an SUV tax that's been implemented, or sorry, proposed, and I have a, a, a video on that topic on our website, Reform California. So if you're driving, you're going to pay uh, just the most uh, extreme level of taxes that you've ever seen. Our initiative would block that. Healthcare tax is for universal health care. They're proposing uh, three types of taxes for the health care tax a payroll tax, which will crush jobs, an income tax, which will hurt everybody, and then third, an excise tax. And an excise tax is particularly damaging because an excise tax says we're going to tax you based on money coming into your business, not your profit. And so you could actually lose money as a small business and still end up being forced to pay a, a tax for money that you collected, even if your expenses were higher than what you earned. That's the healthcare tax. Uh, all they need is a two thirds vote presently on that. Uh, exit tax, this is if you move out of California, they wanna tax you on a graduated scale uh, for each year that you're out of the state. Savings tax, the Democrats call it a wealth tax. I call it a savings tax. So uh, on top of income tax, and sales tax on what you spend, uh, they want to do a, a savings tax on what you save, whether it's your um, 401k or uh, portfolio investments or just your random savings account. Um, oil and gas profit tax. This is a tax that they, the, the Democrats voted to allow a board, the California Energy Commission, to apply administratively um, without a vote of the, of the politicians. And it would say that the oil companies are making too much money, and therefore we're going to take and, and apply a tax. Well, you and I both know that that's just a, a, a stealth gas tax, and that tax burden will be passed on to you and I um, with uh, higher uh, prices at the pump. They also are looking at this utility tax that would be income-based. They want to release your private um, uh, tax return information to the utility companies, and if you earn too much, then you're going to be charged an extra tax on your utility bill, and they will use that tax money to subsidize other rate payers and give them a break on their utility rates. And by the way, this utility tax would force you to pay money on your, your utility bill, even if you use no electricity that month. And then finally, we are tracking hundreds of local tax increases, and every cycle we have to fight sales tax, parcel taxes, property taxes, business taxes um, across the board. And so um, those tax hikes continue to be proposed. Homelessness is the latest flavor of the month. They say, oh, we're going to solve homelessness if you just increase the sales tax or property tax or parcel tax. These people are liars. The money is not going to go to fix homelessness. It will go into that black hole of your local government budget. So here are the challenges we have in fighting these tax hikes. Dishonest ballot titles is our top challenge because the politicians are not going to be truthful about initiatives that contain tax increases. The politicians now get to write the title and summary on every measure, and they, they hide the tax increase when it's presented to voters. If voters actually knew what they were voting on and knew it was a tax increase, they would vote it down. Second, they got unlimited money in their campaigns from union dues, as well as special interests that might get some of the taxpayer money. They also have the lying corrupt media in California that refuses to call them out for their wasteful spending and their deception on the ballot titles. Third, we have bad judges. Uh, the reason why we lost the two thirds vote requirement on local taxes is because liberal judges basically colluded with the politicians to open up a loophole in Prop 13 and Prop 218 uh, to allow a majority vote to approve special tax increases. Well, the initiatives that we supported, Prop 13, Prop 218, that, that the citizens wrote and the citizens put on the ballot and the citizens passed, they didn't say that uh, there should be any exemptions from the two-thirds vote requirement. The bad liberal judges have now opened the door 
and lowered the bar for approving tax hikes. So we have to be uh, ready to fight that and, and overturn their decision. And so here's what our initiative does. Number one, it requires a public vote on all state tax hikes. And this is a brand new requirement. Right now, the tax hikes, like the gas tax in 2017, the car tax in 2017, they can be approved with a two-thirds vote of the legislature, and that's it. Then the tax goes into effect. No vote of the people. Our initiative would require that a tax increase at the state level would have to get a two-thirds vote of the legislature, and it would have to go and be presented to the voters for a majority vote. Now, remember, remember the health care tax I just told you about, the mileage tax, the savings tax, the exit tax? These are all state tax increases. Right now, we are at risk of these tax proposals being approved by a simple supermajority, a two-thirds vote of the legislature. And these politicians, absolutely, they've done it on the gas tax and the car tax. They'll do it on all these others. So we cannot trust that the two-thirds vote requirement is going to be a shield against um, those state taxes. We have to have the, the citizens, the taxpayers, get a role and a voice, which is why this first requirement is a game changer for us. Second, we need to make sure that the legislature has to vote on any fees. So our initiative requires a two-thirds vote in the state legislature on fees. This would eliminate this oil profit penalty that they just passed. And um, I'll talk in a moment about how fees right now are the hidden tax increases of our day. And on your utility bill, they call it a fee when in fact it's a tax. And so um, this is a powerful, powerful uh, provision, a two thirds vote in the legislature on any fees. Um, we also tighten the definition of what a fee versus a tax is so that they can't call something a tax, uh, sorry, a fee in order to avoid a, a vote of the, the people. Third, it restores the two thirds vote requirement for local special taxes. And so this un, undoes what the um, liberal judges did in 2020 on that bad decision um, that uh, lowered the threshold. Also in the initiative, we repeal tax and fee increases that were enacted anytime after January 1st, 2022. So in Los Angeles, there is a uh, measure called ULA. And it's a special property tax on the sale of uh, homes. They call they, they said it was for homelessness. It's, again, a boondoggle. Um, that tax and about three dozen other taxes um, would be overturned immediately because they don't comply with the requirements of the Taxpayer Protection uh, Initiative. And finally, and this is a big one, the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative reforms how the ballot titles are written on tax measures. It requires that the words tax increase be included in the title of the initiative, not just in the summary, in the title of the initiative. And it uh, eliminates the ability for politicians to dress up a tax increase by adding all sorts of popular programs to it. So they cannot imply that a tax is earmarked by adding a uh, uh, tax for police, fire, teachers, children, puppies and kittens, comma, and other general purposes. It requires that if it's a general tax, that it only state general purposes. So let me give you some um, information about the uh, title and summary requirements. Um, the, both the title and the summary and ballot label would include the type or amount or rate of tax, the duration of the tax, and the use of revenue. And as I mentioned, if the, the proposed tax is a general tax, you cannot dress it up with uh, popular programs. This alone will allow us to dramatically shift the um, campaign challenge we have to defeat tax hikes. In fact, I would tell you that if we get just this provision enacted into law, about 80% of tax hikes would immediately be rejected just on the ballot title. We don't even have to run a campaign at that point because voters will see the words tax increase and they'll say, no, not going to do it. That's how important this initiative is to change the game 
uh, going forward on blocking tax hikes. Next slide. So let's talk about taxes versus fees. The initiative defines the word fee as an exempt charge. If it's not an exempt charge, it's presumed to be a tax. So we start out with a very clear definition that says any money collected by the state of California or the local government is presumed to be a tax, except in a very narrow set of circumstances, in which case it can be a fee or what we call an exempt charge. First, that the charge is reasonable for things like licenses, permits, investigations, inspections, and audits. Uh, we exempt Medi-Cal and health plan reimbursement rates. We um, exempt charges for state property and levies for promoting tourism. The definition requires that a fee be voluntary, that it relates to actual costs, that the person paying the fee voluntarily gets a product or service, and that the cost of the fee does not exceed the value to the person, the individual, of the product or service. So this is very, very precise legal language to really put the screws to the politicians who are trying to dress up tax increases as, as fees. Let me also let you know that we shift the burden of proof from um, the person objecting to the fee to the state of California or the local government. They have to prove that the fee indeed is a fee. So we are able to um, give the, the, the taxpayer the ability to challenge more easily these fees in court. Why is this so important? Well, take a look at the utility rates. This report that was released by the Transparency Foundation shows $4.5 billion in increased costs that are being put on your utility bill, and you don't even know that these are taxes. They are actually embedded in the utility rates that you pay, so it doesn't appear as a line item on your, on your bill. $4.5 billion in hidden state taxes added to the utility rates. The recent proposal to release your private income tax information to utility companies and charge you based upon your income, that proposal would be invalidated by the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. So I'm talking about major savings to every Californian would immediately be achieved if we pass the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative, immediate relief for their pocketbooks. So how are we gonna do this? What's the campaign gonna look like? Next slide. Um, the, our key message points will be that California's cost of living is too high and that taxes and utility rates are a large part of why people cannot afford to live here anymore. This is a pretty easy message to convey. And that new tax increases are coming down the pike. The mileage tax, the payroll tax, the excise tax, um, the uh, sales tax hikes, the uh, utility rate hikes, the utility tax, all of these examples help us clarify for voters why they should vote yes. Um, we also have to let them know that if they do pass this initiative, they would get immediate relief. And finally, that they deserve honest titles on what they're voting on. I'm talking to Democrat voters who tell me that they're sick of the ballot measures being so deceptive and they are really angry and frustrated that the titles and summaries are so confusing. I think we can win a lot of those voters over on the concept of fairness and honesty on the ballot. How's our campaign gonna be um, moving forward? Next slide. Slide, uh, again, the next slide. Um, did we skip one? There we go. Uh, our challenges are that politicians already have millions of dollars in their campaign accounts. Because remember, a lot of the special interests like the government unions, they know that with more tax increases, they get salary hikes and pension spikes. So they will spend whatever it takes to destroy this initiative. The liberal media will tell the voters that Oh, government needs so much more money. They're barely surviving. What will we do without a tax increase? Absolute corruption. Uh, I remember a lot of these media outlets want government-funded subsidies now for media. 
a lot of bills are proposing that we subsidize government um, or, or news outlets locally. And so they they want a piece of the cheese. And if you know taxes are more reasonable, they may not have all this money to go around. And then, of course, we do believe that there's a biased ballot title that's been given to this initiative already. Let me give you that ballot title real quick, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Next slide. The ballot title, our ballot title is California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. Uh, we would, you know, consider a variety of fair ballot titles um, if they don't like that one. But what the, the politicians have given us is a very negative and inaccurate untruthful um, ballot title. Title It says limits the ability of voters and state and local governments to raise revenues for government. That's not true. We don't limit the ability of voters to do that. We limit the ability of politicians to raise our taxes. Um, this empowers voters. It doesn't limit the ability of voters. It actually expands the rights of voters. I mean, there are so many examples of why this is fundamentally dishonest provably dishonest, because we actually give voters more opportunities uh, to limit the revenues that are um, being applied to, um, uh, uh, to government. We also allow voters the opportunity to approve more revenue, uh, and they don't have a say in some of those initiatives right now. You know, a lot of people could see this from the other side of the coin. Uh, I could I could go into court and tell a judge, hey, we actually uh, uh, make it so that if voters want to give more money to government, they can because the legislature is not the only ones that get to decide. They just get to put it on the ballot with a two-thirds vote. The voters get to say whether or not they want to raise the revenues. So from a, a variety of ways, uh, provably, this statement is false. Our hope is that it'll be uh, thrown out in court. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association is taking lead on looking at the uh, ballot title and summary, and they are doing wonderful work in the courts on so many levels uh, to fight unfair taxes throughout the state. So we're partnering with them to make sure that uh, we preserve all of the legal rights that this initiative deserves for an honest fight. So here's our strategy to win. First, we need volunteers. We need you to sign up because we are not going to have a whole lot of money for ads, although we have to raise money for ads as well. But our, our strategy has always been to win this campaign on the ground by recruiting volunteers in each region, in each neighborhood, to distribute the plain English voter guide. Because remember, we're playing up the fact that the politicians are lying to us on the ballot. And so we, we are actually getting a lot of voters who say, I need the plain English voter guide because I, I don't want to spend an hour to figure out what I'm voting on. And so we need volunteers to commit to go door to door, to post online, to make phone calls, to text uh, the, the, the ballot uh, voter guide to their friends. Um, this is crucial. If you don't volunteer, if you don't sign up to volunteer, we won't have the boots on the ground. Second, we need to raise money. I cannot wait until October of 2024 to raise our campaign budget. We have to slowly do this now. The more we raise farther out, the more we will be able to convince our business coalition to put more money into the initiative. If they think that we don't have the grassroots uh, and uh, uh, volunteer base and fundraising base, they may say it's impossible to win. But if we show them that we're doing our part, then we might be able to get them to give even more, match us in several campaign uh, expenditures. And so our strategy on raising money is slow, slow but steady. And so we urge you to contribute online at stopcaliforniataxhikes.com or reformcalifornia.org. And third, we've got to get all of our elected officials and candidates to run on taxpayer protection. Uh, just like we tried in 2018 to get them all to run on a gas tax repeal, and uh, many of them didn't, and I still do not know what they were thinking not to not to get all in on that measure. We have to tell every single candidate running from Senate to Congress to Assembly to Water Board to City Council, endorse our measure and also put it on all of your mailers. 
We'll give you the logo, the yes on measure, whatever it's going to be. We haven't gotten our number yet, but when we get our number, we'll do a logo, a lawn sign, get that out. But those candidates need to hear from you. When you talk to them and say, hey, I'm thinking about supporting you, but where are you on the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative? We actually had a Republican vote against the Taxpayer Protection Initiative on a city council vote recently. So we need to make sure we integrate with all the other campaigns, and we're going to need your help to get those organizations behind this initiative. All right. So join the fight at StopCaliforniaTaxHikes.com. That's a website to go to, StopCaliforniaTaxHikes.com. Sign up to volunteer, share the page with friends, invite people to the upcoming town halls that we have, and of course, please contribute. Let's take questions now. If you want to ask a question, raise your hand in the Zoom app. We will call on you. And when you hear your name, please unmute yourself and then ask your question. If you're on the phone, hit star nine to raise your hand and we'll call on you when the tone is um, heard. And then finally, you can type in your questions in the Q&A box or email us at info at reformcalifornia.org. Now, while we wait to get people to raise their hand in Zoom and Jordan calls on them, Ricardo asks in the chat box, how do we know there won't be any funny business during election time against this measure? Well, the funny business has happened already. They, they've tried to lie about the ballot title. And so we're, we're, we're exploring all of our legal options there. Um, we know that they're going to lie, cheat, and steal. And so we have to be very aggressive in educating voters as to what our initiative does, why the other side is saying no, because they want to keep raising our taxes. This is not going to be a fair fight, but it is a fight that we can win. Uh, the next is uh, from Anonymous. The law changed to prevent advocacy on local ballots in 2018. They just ignored it. How will law more laws change things? Well, again, the, I, I know which, which initiative you are talking about. It is um, that that legislation was very broadly written. Um, and so there have been lawsuits that the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association has filed using that law. And they've won. And local governments have been fined for using taxpayer money in these uh, uh, the ballot measure campaigns. But this constitutional amendment, we have really, really looked at it from every angle. It is powerful. It is simple language. It's going to be hard for them to get around. OK, we have someone in the queue. Uh, go ahead and uh, um, announce them, please. Uh, Michael Freeman. Michael, I'm going to um, ask you to unmute. And then, Michael Freeman, please unmute yourself and at, ask your question. You're still muted. Hit unmute. No. Michael, you're still unmuted. You need to unmute yourself. Michael Freeman, are you there? Click unmute. All right. We'll go to the next question while well, Michael figures that out. Uh, Anonymous says the business roundtable has millions in the banks, bank to get it passed. How will a few individual effort make a difference? That's not true at all. Um, business roundtable uh, help uh, fund the signature phase, but I, I've talked to them. Uh, we are still short on funds. And so we're talking about our opponents having millions of dollars against us. How will a few individuals make a difference? Let me tell you what happened in 2020. Prop 15. The business groups spent millions of dollars, and we appreciate that, on ads, but the needle did not move enough to defeat Prop 15, because remember, it said it was the School Improvement and Community Service Initiative. But what we saw is that when voters actually got our voter guide, when they sat down at the table and did a little bit of research, they found their way to the right answer. And so we won Prop 15 not on the TV. We won Prop 15 on the ground, and it all had to do with clarifying for people when they put pen to paper, what is the initiative actually doing? Don't look at the ballot title. Those people are lying to you. Look at this voter guide, get the plain English voter guide, and vote accordingly. So um, let me just say, our opponents want us not to go and do a grassroots campaign. You cannot win an election just by putting TV ads up. You got to have people on the ground. And that's how we saw Prop 13 pass in 1978. 
That's how we defeated Prop 15 in 2020. That's how we're going to win with the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative in 2024. I think the only people that want us not to do a ground campaign are campaign consultants who like getting lots of commission from pricey TV ads. It just doesn't work to just have TV ads. Is there another person in the queue on Zoom? I don't see any. Chris Robel, could you back up, please, uh, on the slide deck, please? Chris uh, Robel uh, mm -hmm. is challenging bonds in San Mateo. Um, give us an email, Chris, um, and we'll answer your question offline. How much Democrat support is for your initiative? How do we win? Can we win their support? Um, I've seen the polling. If if uh, Democrats know that um, our initiative will give them tax relief, then you will find that they will vote for the initiative. Even Democrat voters are against it, um, against tax increases. Democrat voters are against utility rate spikes. The only Democrats who want tax increases are Democrat politicians. So I do believe that this is a bipartisan um, taxpayer relief bill. And we just have to make sure that we, we message and communicate to Democrat working families. Uh, James asks, is there a copy of this presentation? Yes, we have a, a copy of this presentation online at Reform California. Kyle asks, what supplies are available now to pass out door-to-door? -door? We do have our um, uh, flyer that we are passing out at storefronts right now. We can send those to you if you contact us at info at reformcalifornia.org. But the real focus is going to be the door-to-door -door, uh, 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 hangers, door hangers, uh, as well as the digital email of the voter guide come November 2022, uh, 2024. How does a two-thirds vote by legislators on fees help if there's no public approval for fees? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, right now there is no two-thirds vote on fees. There's no vote on fees. So by putting politicians on the hot seat, we can hold them better accountable. The oil tax is a perfect example. The, the Democrat politicians did not want to apply an oil tax. So Gavin Newsom did not get his two-thirds vote. And that's why Gavin came and said, I have an idea. I'll, I'll let you off the hook so you don't get blamed for the gas and gas tax increase. We will do a vote to allow the commission to apply a fee, a penalty fee to the oil companies. And we'll make it legal this way. And that way you don't have to tell your voters that you voted for this. Well, if we had the Taxpayer Protection Initiative in law, those politicians would not have that escape route. They would have to stand and vote on the fee. So I, I believe having a, 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 a two-thirds vote on fees is crucial. We don't have that right now. We don't even have a majority vote on fees. And having a public vote on all taxes statewide is crucial as well because voters do not want tax increases. Um, Anonymous asks, aren't these seven measures, I think you're referring to the tax hikes, unconstitutional? Some of them are uh, legally dubious. And so the exit tax, for example, we believe we can challenge that in court. But for all of these uh, initiatives, we cannot assume that we're going to win in court because we're talking about liberal judges in the state of California. We've got to get this constitutional amendment passed so that the voters can ultimately decide. Do you have literature in Spanish for the Latino demographic? Yes, we will be having Spanish ads as we have in each campaign. Um, Karen Vanderbroek says, uh, please explain how utility companies can legally charge people different rates for the same product. Well, that's a great question. Under our initiative, they would not be able to do that. They would only be able to charge based upon a specific product or service and the value of that. You would not be able to charge different rates. Um, right now, the California Public Utilities Commission claims that the Assembly Bill 205 gives, gives them the legal justification to charge some people more and other people less. Um, I believe that that is subject to legal challenge. And I know that 
Uh, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association is closely looking at that. Um, but again, we have liberal judges that will wink and nod. Anytime there's a uh, tax increase, the ability for politicians to get more money, the liberal judges tend to do anything they can to um, make it possible. All right, we are now at 1240. I want to encourage you, if you have any other questions, to email us at info at reformcalifornia.org. Uh, this presentation is going to be posted to our website under stopcaliforniataxhikes.com, stopcaliforniataxhikes.com. Thank you for joining.